Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a brand new pick a pile for you guys today. And today we are asking the question, what makes you attractive? So this is kind of like a romance, love related reading, but it may not necessarily be specific to your person. Um, it could be what your person finds attractive about you, but this could also just be in general as a whole, like, you know, what the opposite sex or, you know, whoever is interested in you, like, you know, why, what it is they find appealing and attractive about you. So we're going to dive in and find out. So we have four different piles, four different unicorn statues to pick, pick from, uh, unicorn figurines. Pile number one is this pink, um, this very pink metallic looking unicorn. Very cute. Pile number two is this mommy and baby pair. So we have like a little mom and baby unicorn sitting on like a cloud or something. Pile number three is actually a unicorn pegasus and it's a Christmas ornament, but you know, it still works for this reading, still works for an object. So we have the rainbowy colorful unicorn pegasus. And pile number four, we have another pair of unicorns. I know they don't look like unicorns because they're technically actually missing their horns. So they look like horses, but you can see like, where is it? Like, it's supposed to be like right there and right there, um, but their horns broke off. But they're still unicorns, they're still pretty. They're prancing along together. And this is pile number four. So choose your unicorn. Timestamps are down below, and we're gonna get started with pile number one, the pink metallic unicorn. Hi, pile one. If you chose the pink metallic unicorn, then this is going to be the reading for you, and we're gonna find out what people find attractive about you or you know your specific person. We're gonna dive in here. So very appropriate for our unicorn pieces today. We have the crystal unicorn tarot and you guys have the page of wands, the two of wands, the four of swords, the four of pentacles, and the two of cups. From the Ice Cream Oracle, you guys have Blue Moon, Dream, Imagine, Create, and Coffee, Adrenaline, Motivation, Activity. From the Divine Dog of Wisdom deck, we have Shame, Bad Dog, No Biscuit and boredom, time to sit and stay. And finally, from loving words from Jesus, because at least in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away, you guys have, peace be unto you as my father hath sent me, John 20, 21. All right. Well, let's get into it. We have quite a bit to unpack here. Um, we're gonna check in here first with these wands and see what's going on here. So I'm just gonna dive in to the Crystal Unicorn Tarot book so we can see exactly how this relates to how people are finding you to be attractive. All right, the two of wands. This unicorn has visualized what he wants and is focusing on manifesting that vision. His left hand holds a staff of a smoky quartz, which will help him achieve his goals. In his right hand, I feel like it should say right hoof. That's why I keep pausing. I'm like, they have hoofs, not hands. Okay, anyway. <laughs> 
Um, in his right hand or hoof, however you want to put it, he holds the world, which gives him a glimpse of the ideas yet to be discovered. Your ship of prosperity has just sailed off, and you are awaiting to see the mula from the ideas you've sent out. Keywords, confidence, winning, and authority. Okay, so usually, oops, I'm just knocking my stand here a little bit. Um, usually when I see, I'm just gonna adjust this really quick. I'm like knocking things off here. I'm getting so excited about the wands, I'm getting a little crazy. My dog is also at my feet, so he's kind of getting a little obtrusive right now and into my business, a little extra hard. Um, <laughs> and his bed is like right here and he won't lay down in it. Um, anyway, so usually when I see the two of wands, I kind of see like a split decision between like two different choices that you're passionate about. But, you know, I look at the key words here they have here, confidence, winning, and authority. And immediately that tells me that people or your person in particular, they're probably attracted to you because you're very confident. You, you may not necessarily even feel very confident, but... Confidence is definitely something that you exude and wand energy in general regardless of You know which card it is wands are definitely very passionate so you're probably very passionate about life and Your pursuits and your interests and those kinds of things too, which can be very appealing and very attractive to people because you know it's more appealing to be around someone who is actually passionate about what they're doing than like going through a nine to five job or something that they hate and they don't enjoy. And you know, it's, it's understandable if you have to, you know, work a nine to five job because you have to um, pay your bills and stuff. And it's okay if it's not always something that you like. But I think the idea is to not get stuck in that and to still be like pursuing your passions and pursuing your interests elsewhere so you're not stuck in that forever. And I don't think that you're the kind of person that would, which is, you know, like I said, very attractive. Who wants to hang out with someone who's a stick in the mud, basically? Okay, the Page of Wands says, this card will bring you awesome news along with a nice dash of encouragement and support. It is news that you want to receive, but it might come to you unexpectedly, perhaps by a messenger. Keywords, enthusiastic, creativity, and discover. Okay, so, you know, I, I really like referencing the keywords here that they have in the book because I feel like these keywords really references qualities that are probably of you that are are what's making you attractive so you're probably someone who is enthusiastic which makes sense because if you're very passionate about what you're doing you're enthusiastic about it you're probably very creative and you're always discovering you're always probably finding new ideas and new ways of going about things which is probably very appealing to others when they um when they meet you. And I also noticed that it mentioned that, um, you know, the Page of Wands is someone who brings along encouragement and support. So you're probably someone who's very empathetic. You're probably someone who is very encouraging and supportive, you know, kind of like a little cheerleader for your friends and your family. So, you know, of course someone is going to want to be around somebody who's, you know, spreading cheer everywhere you go. You know, why, why wouldn't you? Sorry, I'm laughing at my dog. He's still at my feet. It's kind of driving me nuts. Um, I may have to adjust him before I move on to the next group. All right, on to the swords here. Oh, yeah. Okay, swords, pentacles, and cups. I'm like, we got a whole bunch of different things going on here. Okay, so the four of swords. For the four of swords, it says time is out. It's time to rest and replenish your energy and body for the next step. You've got to restore yourself and return to your roots before moving forward or you will get burnt out. Take some time to meditate, sleep, yoga, or even go to the spa. Set aside your amethyst sword for now and rest your awesome self. Replenish, revive, and rejuvenation are your keywords. So 
what this is basically telling me is you're someone who works hard. You may be someone who probably works a little bit too hard, and you're probably someone who needs to find the time to take for yourself and rest and replenish and treat yourself to a spa day or whatever you need to do, you know, even just a day at home in your pajamas watching Netflix or something, you know, you probably do a lot for other people, which makes sense here with, you know, the page of wands, the page of wands is going around giving support, giving encouragement, being very enthusiastic. And sometimes if you do this a little bit too much, you know, you may reach burnout point. So make sure you're taking time to rest for yourself. Um, that's not really like, I guess you could say an, att an attractive quality, but it may be something that people admire about you that you do go the extra mile, but um, you should definitely stop to take time for yourself without a doubt. Um, okay, I keep knocking the uh, camera here. Okay. Pentacles, 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 Four of Pentacles. We have, you have achieved a level of security, but you are scared that you will lose it. So you hold on to everything tightly, not about to let go of anything. Trust that you have a secure foundation and more is coming your way. Relax, chill, and let go. Keywords, possessive, control, and hoarding. Okay, so what I'm seeing out of this card is you may not necessarily feel like you have it all together and you may not always feel like you're stable and secure, but in the eyes of others, you truly are. They see you as someone who is stable, who is secure, who is a solid foundation, who doesn't have to struggle with money or anything like that. Um... But most likely, you don't feel that way. I mean, you can see the concern even on this unicorn's face. You know, he he doesn't look happy with his coins, even though he has them. He's even got a crown with one sitting on top of it, but, you know, he seems a little insecure there. Um, so, you know, try not to be too controlling when it comes to this or a hoarder or anything like that. But I do think that others probably see you as someone who is secure so I think you just need to see that in yourself that you know you're probably better off than you think you are but people definitely see you as someone who is um, secure solid with your foundation and all good in that area you know someone who is not um, struggling that's for sure okay and we have the Two of Cups. And I don't even need to look into the booklet here for the Two of Cups because, you know, the Two of Cups is about love. The Two of Cups is about a union, you know, between two souls. And, you know, it's just like that lovey-dovey, two-becoming-one kind of feeling. And, I mean, you just look at the card here, and these two unicorns are very happy to be spending time together. They're holding on to, you know, their glasses of wine there or whatever. They're enjoying their time. Like, they're just happy. And I feel like, especially if you do have a person of interest in your life, you know, whether this is someone that you're currently with or, you know, just a love interest in general, maybe you're, you guys aren't even together right now, but I do feel like that there is a love interest in your heart, in your life, who sees this kind of way of living with you, who sees this kind of life with you. Um, so yeah, and they're just they're just drawn to that. They're just drawn to like this happy union. And I think that they're drawn to this happy union because they see you as someone who's stable. They see you as someone who works really hard for others, but probably needs to take a break for yourself. Someone who's very passionate and someone who is like this supportive cheerleader to everybody. So, um, yeah, which is funny. We, we also have um, adrenaline, motivation, and activity here. And when I see that, I think of like that cheerleader, go, 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 you're helping taking care of everybody else kind of a thing. Um, but still, you know, make sure you stop and rest. That's pretty important. But I do feel that people see you as someone who has a lot of energy, a lot of adrenaline, 
with Blue Moon, um, Dream, Imagine, Create. Um, once again, I think we already mentioned here with the wands how you are likely a very creative person. And aside from that, like, I feel like once again, going back to that special person in your life, that love interest, um, they probably see you as a dream come true since we have dream here. You know, you're someone who comes into their life once in a blue moon. Um, now, it's kind of funny here. We have shame and boredom, <laughs> which aren't necessarily like positive traits, but here's what I take from it because we have a lot of other positive things happening here with these other cards. Um, I feel like number one with boredom, it's, I almost kind of get like this opposite feeling because we are, we are asking what people are attracted to you. And I feel like people are not bored when they're around you. Like boredom is actually the last thing that they feel. If anything, I feel like time to sit and stay is kind of reflected of the four of swords here where you do need to sit and stay sometimes and replenish yourself because you're kind of go, go, go and do, do, do for others so much. Not that you would ever be bored in doing that because I don't think that you would be and I don't think others see you as someone who is boring. I think the biggest key here though is the time to sit and stay part that you do need to just kind of relax and replenish sometimes so you can continue to be there for others because people really respect um, your support and your encouragement in their life. As for shame, um, you know, I don't think that you are having any shame necessarily. This is going to sound kind of weird, but I feel like those who are insecure and not as confident in themselves, they actually may feel like a level of shame around you because they may feel like you're better than them, like putting you on a pedestal kind of a thing, which is not your fault at all. Like, I'm sure you're not doing anything to provoke that. But I feel like, you know, there are some out there who may feel that way in your presence, um, which, I mean, I guess you could say that's a flattering quality, obviously, but at the same time, you know, like you don't want anyone to feel badly around you or anything like that, but that's kind of what I get from the shame card. And, you know, as for Jesus, peace be unto you as my father hath sent me. And once again, I feel like you're someone who brings peace and comfort into others' lives. You know, going back into that cheerleader energy here, you're someone who's very supportive. You're someone who's everybody's friend, someone who's everyone's cheerleader. So, you know, you bring peace, you bring comfort, you bring support, and that's definitely something that people find very attractive about you, um, including, you know, your special person, because I do feel like there's a special person involved in your life who finds you very attractive inside and out. Anyway, that's what I have for you guys, pile number one. I hope it resonated and it made sense for you. If the message did not flow, of course, just to let it go. But if it did, I would love to hear from you. Please let me know in the comments down below. Um, also, please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot. Feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on their way. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, Pile 2. If you chose this mommy and baby unicorn duo, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out what makes you attractive. So, very fitting here for, you know, a unicorn object here. We've got the crystal unicorn tarot, and we're going to see what cards you guys got. You guys have the moon, the king of swords, the Two of Swords, the Seven of Cups, and the Three of Wands. 
from the Ice Cream Oracle, you guys have Cookie Dough, Building Evolution Development, Fig, Abundance, Fertility, and Expansion. From the Divine Dog deck, you guys have Clarity, right under your nose, and imagination, get the big picture. And from loving words from Jesus, because at least in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away, you guys got, give and it shall be given unto you, Luke 6, 38. All right, so let's get into this here, you guys. Um, all right. Well, first of all, we're gonna we're gonna look at the swords because you guys got a little bit of sword action going on here with the two of swords and the king of swords. Um, okay, according to the crystal unicorn book for the tarot, it says, "Don't drag your magical hooves any longer. Now is the time to make a decision." The information has been gathered, and now it's time to act. The decision you make will be fair and restore rainbows and sprinkles into the world. With the intuitive guidance of the moon and the amethyst crystal, you will make a decision with confidence that everyone will be satisfied with. Keywords, decisions, impasse, and compromise. Very interesting, um, especially considering it actually mentions in the book um, that the moon helps you in making your decisions and you guys got the moon card. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, okay. So with the two of swords here and basically with it being all about making decisions and you know, you, and, well, yeah, and I see how they got the moon. The moon is literally in the card, but, um, yeah, I was going to say though that the Two of Swords is usually about, you know, being stuck between two different choices, being stuck between two different decisions. And I feel like people see you as someone who is really good at making decisions. So you could be stuck between a rock and a hard place, between two really tough choices, and you would still be the one to somehow land on your feet and make the right choice even in the hardest of decisions. So I feel like that's something that people admire about you and find attractive about you. Others may not be able to make decisions as quickly as you do, um, which is funny because, you know, we have the King of Swords here. So I feel like the King of Swords is kind of like how you go about in um, making those decisions. Actually, I'm gonna double check what it says here in this book specifically about the King of Swords so we can see how he kinda lines up here with your um, decision-making process because I feel like the, the two of them are definitely connected. Um, okay, King of Swords. You have the power to make good choices. what I tell you? Good choices. You have enough time to explore your options and evaluate every opportunity. There is no need to rush to an obvious solution. There is more than one way to meet every challenge. Examine your situation from all perspectives. Keywords, logical, intellectual, advisor. Okay, yeah, so like I said, you're someone who's really good at making choices and the reason why is because you're standing strong in your King of Swords energy. Um, so you may be someone who is a little bit more pragmatic, someone who is very logical and intellectual. Maybe you're someone who's kind of on the book smart side. Um, you know, maybe you did well when you were in school, things like that. And, uh, you know, those are things that people find attractive about you and admirable about you. We also have the moon here, and the moon is all about mystery. You know, it's about the things unseen, the hidden. So even though you may be like very smart, you may be very intellectual, um, you may be really good at making decisions and executing on them, um, 
you're not someone who like wears your heart on your sleeve though and you don't give everything away and it's almost like there's this air of mystery about you so you know that air of mystery is what pulls people in people want to know more you know they're just like yeah but what what's going on with so and so you know it's almost like you're the kind of person where it's like you could be dating someone and people are just like, who are they dating? Who are they da dating? Like, I don't even know. Who are they dating? But it's almost like this mystery nobody knows, but people want to know kind of a thing. So there's definitely this mysterious quality about you, which draws people in. Now, it's funny here because the Seven of Cups is about making decisions once again. Um, as you can tell, you know, this unicorn has a lot of options in front of it and is having a little bit of trouble here making a decision, which is funny because we've ar we already know you're pretty good at making decisions based upon not just one, but two swords, sword cards. So I'm just going to double check here in the book to see where the cups necessarily would come in with... Um, where are the cups? No, that's not cups. Those are wands. We're going to get to wands in a bit. Um, but yeah, we're going to see exactly like how the decision making of the cups fits in with your sword energy here. Okay. So many sparkling choices. You are confused. Take time to step back and see the big picture. Figure out which one has the best value for your whole self overall. Don't let the idea of having it all whisk you into regret later. You can have a ton of things, but do not be but you may not be satisfied or, or satisfied on a spiritual or emotional level. Make sure you know what you want, quality over quantity. Keywords, bedazzled, illusion, fantasy. Okay, interesting. Um, what really stuck out to me here about their definition was quality over quantity. And I feel like you're definitely someone who is a quality person. You are not a quantity person. Um, I don't see you as someone who, you know, has issues with illusion or anything like that because, oh, I'm dropping the cards. Um, <laughs> because we do have the swords here, which are really good at making decisions and being smart about the decisions and intellectual about the decisions. So if anything, I feel like the illusion is tied to the moon. That, you know, maybe sometimes you're so mysterious to people, you may even give off the wrong impression, not necessarily on purpose, but you may give the wrong impression because you don't give everything away about yourself, which means you're leaving others with lots of different choices as to what could be going on with you. You know, you're kind of leaving others as, you know, kind of like at their own devices to figure out, well, gee, you know, if they're not doing this, then maybe they're doing that. And I mean, that's totally not on you. You know, that's not your responsibility at all. But I feel like that almost like keeps them in the loop. It almost like... <laughs> Yes, Shadow. It, it keeps them coming back for more in a weird way. Um, and then we have the Three of Wands. And the Three of Wands is all about waiting for your ships to come in. Um, so I feel like you're someone who's very patient um, when I see this card. Because when you're waiting for your ships to come in, you know, you're not necessarily charging forward and going after what you want. You're kind of just hanging back and being receptive and waiting for those things to come in. So, you know, it takes a lot of faith and patience and endurance to do that, which I feel like you're someone who definitely has those qualities about you because you're already like a very smart and logical person. So you're going to know when those right times are to kind of hang back and allow things to come to you. And, um, you know, that's what this unicorn is doing. This unicorn is waiting for those ships to come in. So... I feel like because you are someone who is strong enough to kind of like wait that out. Um, oh, excuse me, I'm yawning out of nowhere. It's been a long day. Um, anyway, but I feel like because 
um, you do have that strength and endurance to kind of wait things out and wait for the best of the best to come your way. That's something, once again, that people find attractive about you, that they probably <coughs> wish they could do themselves. Shadow, no. Um, and my One of my neighbors is in the courtyard, and my dog is totally flipping out over him in the mirror there. Um, Okay, speaking of dogs, as long as Shadow is barking, we might as well launch into these dog cards. Um, okay, so we have imagination. And I believe that even though you can be a very logical and intellectual person, you still have a healthy imagination. It's not like you're so in your head that everything is just black and white and facts and figures and numbers to you. You do have this ima imaginative side, this creative side. This is probably the side of you that is more spiritual, the side of you that um, can really like dig down deep into your intuition and, you know, kind of see like the more mystical and fantasy side of things in life. And, um, you know, that's, that's a good balance to have. And I feel like other people see that in you and are definitely drawn to your imagination. We also have clarity right under your nose. So um, once again, because you kind of have like a lot of smarts going on for you and stuff, I feel like um, you, you're able to bring a lot of clarity to others. Um, you're able to reveal to others what is right underneath their noses. And I feel like people are very appreciative to that and they're very thankful for your insight and your perspectives, which is, once again, an attractive quality. Um, we have fake hair, abundance, fertility, and expansion. So you're an abundant person. You know, chances are you're, you're someone who's pretty good at manifesting things, uh, you know, considering you're really good at making decisions and, um, you know, you're, you're good at making decisions and you're good at knowing when to hang back and to allow something to come to you and when it's time to, like, go forward and go get what you want. Um, I feel like that's a really good balance that you have in your life, which has brought you a lot of abundance, and it just continues on for you to expand in your life and be fertile in your life and this could be in a lot of ways this could be in regards to your finances and your career it could be in your friendships it could be in your romantic relationships it could be in your family um you know in anything even just hobbies and interests there are so many ways that you're probably applying that and you're probably applying it in more than one area of your life we also have cookie dough, building evolution and development, which is funny because I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with expansion and abundance because one of the ways that you achieve abundance is by building, is by developing. So it's like before you get to that phase in your life where you're abundant in something, you have to have the building blocks and the tools to do that. And, you know, I feel like that's where you're king of swords energy comes in of being logical and smart about things and you're able to take the tools at your disposal and um you know also use a little bit of that imagination there and um create things and build things and you know push things forward so you can have that abundant life and i feel i feel like you have a lot of people who really look up to you is what it comes down to you know people really look up to you they feel like you have a lot of things figured out and you're probably a lot further along in your accomplishments than most people are and um yeah I feel like people are really really drawn to that um if there's a special person in your life they are especially drawn to that and I can promise you that's a huge reason why they're with you or why they're interested in you or why you know they're like your divine counterpart or whatever but, you know, that's a huge reason why you are attractive. So pretty awesome stuff there. Um, also, give and it shall be given unto you. So when I see this card, I just see it as you are a very giving person. You're probably someone who gives back in your time, in your money, in your efforts, in your love, in your affection, in your encouragement um, towards others. So you are definitely a giver. You're not a taker. And that is a beautiful thing to be as well. So 
that's what I see going on for you guys. I hope it made sense and resonated. If the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did hit home for you, please let me know and leave a comment down below. Otherwise, give this video a big thumbs up. That certainly helps me out a lot. Feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know of new videos when they are on your way. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, Pile 3. If you chose this rainbowy unicorn pegasus Christmas ornament, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out what makes you attractive. All right. And naturally, for all these unicorns going on here, we're gonna start off with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. And we have the Nine of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune, the Six of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Six of Cups. From the Ice Cream Oracle, we have Cherry Vanilla, Love, Passion, Relationships, and Tiger, Strength, Dignity, Majesty. From the Divine Dog deck, we have Celebration, Acknowledge Your Victories, and Faith. You have all you need right now. And finally, from Loving Words from Jesus, because at least in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away, you guys got... According to your faith, be unto it. Matthew 9, 29. All right, let's get into this here, you guys. Find out what's going on. We're going to start things off here with the Nine of Swords. I'm just going to refer here really quick to my booklet, the Crystal Unicorn Tarot booklet. See what it has to say here about our little unicorn with the Nine of Swords. And it says, there are things in your life right now that you can't, that you can't control. And it is giving you nightmares or messing with your sleep. You are being too hard on yourself and stressing on the small stuff. This card tells you to wake up and see the truth to your situation. Despair can keep you from allowing opportunities to to flow, which in turn stops you from achieving your goals. So let go and find your inner Zen unicorn. Keywords, sleepless, despair, anxiety. Well, none of those things are necessarily very positive. Um, and obviously we're looking for positive things here. So let's see what a few of the other cards have to say to see how it all connects because I'm sure there's a connection, otherwise it wouldn't be there. The Six of Swords says, you've accepted the hand you've been dealt and now you're ready to move forward to a better place. You're ready to change, you're ready for a change of scenery. The magical water you are crossing right now is smooth sailing an opportunity awaits you at the end of the shore. Keywords, tra transition, moving, and acceptance. Okay, all right, that's a, that's a little bit better here. Um, finally, I'm gonna check in here on our Wheel of Fortune. Where are you, Wheel of Fortune? I know you're in here. All I can think of is the game show, but <laughs> This is not the actual Wheel of Fortune show. All right, Wheel of Fortune. Cash in on an awesome karma. You are one lucky unicorn. Everything points to good fortune, abundance, and happiness. Just like the Jade Crystal, you are wiser and ready for a new phase of life with all things pointing in your favor. Key words, luck, fortune, and happiness. Okay. 
I think I'm starting to see where this is going now together. Okay. So I feel like in the past, this has been you guys. In the past, or maybe even presently right now, I mean, you may not necessarily even be out of this energy fully yet, but I feel like you guys at some point have suffered a lot of anxiety, depression, sleep, sleepless nights, not so great stuff. Um, you know, this is kind of the card signifying the hardships and the trials that you guys have been through. Even if you, even if they may not necessarily be hardships to other people, um, even if it's kind of spilt milk to others or whatever, it's still been hard for you. Um, so this kind of signifies like the difficulties and struggles that you've been through in the past. However, it seems that you guys are moving on from that because the Six of Wands indicates, you know, moving on, transitioning, um, it indicates going to a better place, a place of abundance and opportunity, and obviously the Wheel of Fortune is huge abundance, huge opportunity, huge things going right and going your way. So when I look at like these three cards put together, you know, really kind of in this order, going from the struggle to the transition to like the best of the best of life, I feel like people have seen this transition in you and this is something that they admire about you because maybe not everyone is able to make this transition. You know, I feel like a lot of people who maybe are around you or you interact with, they kind of take this part out. You know, a lot of people may be here and they want to get here, but they're not making any transition that's necessary with this card in order to get there. But you have somehow mastered how to do this. You are mastering that transition. And I feel like that transition isn't exactly easy. You know, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of faith. Um, it takes a lot of resilience and stamina. So I feel like that's something that people see in you that's very attractive because a lot of people can't find the glue to go from here to here but you definitely have. And, you know, we also have the uh, Nine of Pentacles here. So the Nine of Pentacles is, you know, literally just one pentacle away from having it, uh, having it all. Um, but since you guys do have the Wheel of Fortune, I do feel like you are going to have it all. You may not have fully transitioned to this ultimate fulfillment, this complete and total change, yet you may still be in the process of going there and doing that, which is why you guys are here right now, and you may be just like one pentacle short of that ten of pentacle, but, um, you know, you guys are doing the work, you guys have been doing the work, so for most of you, I feel like you guys are probably out of this energy, this is probably past energy here, um, but yeah, so most of you are probably in this Nine of Pentacles energy. Um, for, for most of you guys, I'm guessing you guys are probably single because I feel like that last pentacle is probably like that person um, since we are talking about being attractive here. Um, but that doesn't mean that that person isn't in your life. You know, you could be in a twin flame dynamic, a soulmate dy dynamic, something like that, where, you know, that union hasn't fully come together yet. But I do feel that that's something that your person finds attractive about you. They see this nine of pentacle energy in you where you're just, you know, that one little bit away. They probably have been watching this transition that you've been going through and they, they probably admire it a lot and they find it beautiful and amazing. And it's probably someone from your past because the Six of Cups is your nostalgia card. It's your past life card. So if you guys don't have much of a history, then this is probably someone that you have a past life with. But I feel like for a lot of you guys, you probably have history with this person. Maybe you guys were together once before in the past. You know, maybe they're a old flame, an ex-love or something like that. 
but um, you guys definitely have a history. There's some kind of history there. Um, but this person, you know, that's that's one of the things that they love about you. Like they they love those good times. They love and treasure those memories with you for sure. They find that very attractive. And then you know, love, passion, relationships. You know, I feel like your person or people in general see you as a very loving and passionate person, especially the person of interest here. Because I I feel like for most of you guys, you may not be with this person, but it's like. How, how do I describe it? It's like on paper, you guys are single, but in your heart, you're taken kind of a thing. So I feel like that's what it is for most, most of you guys because you have relationships here and you have that, you know, six of cups, past love kind of situation, you know, just, just one pinnacle away from that ultimate fulfillment that's going to bring you that wheel of fortune. So I feel like you guys are really, really close to that. Um, but this person is definitely very attracted to you. Um, also, we have strength, dignity, majesty. So you're someone who's very strong, which makes sense because if you were able to go from here to here to here to ultimately get here, you know, that takes a lot of strength, you guys. Like, that takes work that takes spiritual work, that takes faith, that takes emotional work. It just, it takes a lot of work. It takes time. That's something that does not happen overnight. So you guys definitely have strength and it's almost kind of like you guys have this royalty about you with the um, dignity and majesty going on here as well. So that's definitely something that people find very attractive in you celebration acknowledge your victories so number one i feel victory is very close and around the corner for you guys because once again you're in that nine of pentacle place and you're transitioning to get into the complete wheel of fortune mode where you got it all basically um which is going to be a time of celebration and the other thing i think that's really cool about this card too is I think you're someone who's just always down to party. <laughs> not like in a careless, haphazard, let's get drunk and wasted and not remember what we did the night before kind of a way, but I mean it in a way of like, you're always down for like a fun time, for a good time, you know, for just celebrating and enjoying life. You know, whether that means going to an actual party or, um, you know, maybe someone just wants to like go out for dinner or something. You're like, yeah, let's go out for dinner. That sounds like fun. Or, you know, go to an amusement park for the day or, um, you know, go to the beach for the day or something like that. Like you're just always down for a celebratory, fun and good time. And I feel like you're definitely the kind of person of, you know, when other people around you have something good happen to them, you know, you're one of the first people there who congratulates them and celebrates right alongside with them, which is why people automatically want to celebrate with you when good things happen for you. And we have faith. You have all you need right now. And, you know, like I said, I feel like you're someone who has an incredible amount of faith um, because, like I said, you've gone from anxiety and depression to transitioning out of that to being in this really good place of the Nine of Pentacles where you're almost at your ultimate fulfillment, where you can have it all, all the blessings and favor you want with the Wheel of Fortune. You are so close. And like I said, it's taken you guys a lot of time. It's taken you guys a lot of work. It's taken you guys a lot of faith. And one thing that I noticed right off the bat when the cards were coming out, you know, we have faith. And then your Jesus card also references faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. So, like I said, I feel like you're someone who has an incredible amount of faith, probably more so than others, and I feel like people find that very attractive and admire that in you. You know, a lot of people probably wish that they had that level of faith within themselves because, you know, it's that kind of faith that could move mountains, you know, like that does unbelievable stuff. It's that kind of faith where, you know, you have a friend or a family member who 
maybe terminal with a deadly disease or something, and you're sitting there praying your ass off, having faith like no other, and somehow your faith makes a difference, and next thing you know, that person is healed, and whatever that disease was, was gone. Like, that's the kind of faith that you have, and it's a very rare kind, and it's a very bold kind, and it's a very beautiful kind. So never, ever, ever back down from your faith, because I can tell right now that it's it's brought you through so much, and it's going to help bring others through too, seeing what you've been through, and it's it's very attractive, and especially, especially to that person in your life, especially that person from your past who's coming back, who's going to help make this Wheel of Fortune really move and uh, be whole and complete. So that's definitely pretty awesome. Anyway, that's what I see going on for you guys. Um, if the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did make sense, please let me know and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you, of course. Um, otherwise, please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot. And um, feel free to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are coming your way. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, Pile 4. If you chose this unicorn duo, Prancing on a Cloud, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out what makes you attractive. All right. Now, naturally, because, um, you know, we are dealing with unicorns, of course, we're going to deal with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot and see what is going on here, see what we need to know. All right, we have the Star, the Three of Swords, the Knight of Cups, the Ace of Cups, and the Tower. All right. Now, don't get scared now, because I know the tower is in there, and that could automatically be like, ah, oh, why is that there? We're going to find out. All right. Um, from the Ice Cream Oracle, we have ooh, Coconut, Protection, Purification, and Boundaries. Neapolitan, Collaboration, Teamwork, Resourcefulness. And from the Divine Dog of Wisdom Oracle, you guys have acceptance, loving what is, and humility, bow down. Finally, from Loving Words from Jesus, you guys got, because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. You are the light of the world, Matthew 5, 14. Okay, you guys, we have a lot of stuff going on here, which is very interesting. Um, you guys may be my most polarizing group yet. And I don't mean that in a bad way whatsoever. I just mean that as in you guys have like a really strong energy that really carries through and impacts people heavily. <laughs> Um, and here's what I mean. Okay. Um, number one, we, we're going to start with the uh, Knight of Cups. Okay. So in the Crystal Unicorn Tarot book right here, this says, This romantic card will often appear in a reading when you are falling head over heels in love with a person, job, place, or interest. Follow your heart's desire and create a magical world for yourself. Keywords, romantic, charmed, love, which totally makes sense. Um, okay, so you guys are my little charmers is the best way I can describe it. You guys are my charmers, my movers, my shakers. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. You guys are like my heartbreakers, if anything. So... Usually when you meet people, you know, and I'm going with the Ace of Cups here, you know, the Ace of Cups is usually a new beginning in love. Um, it's usually a new romantic offer. You know, it's, it's fresh love emotions and everything. So usually when you first meet people, 
you bring in this be like even if you're not doing it on purpose and you're probably not honestly like this is something that you're probably not doing on purpose this is just how you kind of carry yourself um so usually at the beginning of a love situation where there's a brand new love offer you kind of come in with this knight of cups energy where you're just very charming you're very charismatic um very romantic you know, maybe a little bit of a flirt kind of a thing. You just have a way of, like, hooking people in is what it comes down to. You have a way of just getting people hooked on you. And um, a lot of times people look at you in this star energy. And when you look at the star, you know, the star is like this bright, shining, beautiful thing in the sky. Something to be admired. And I feel like a lot of people around you kind of look at you like this. Like... You almost probably look like you're an insta-famous Instagram model or something to people or a celebrity or something of that kind of status, like something that's really up there where people really kind of put you on this pedestal and, you know, you probably don't think that you're better than anybody at all, but people probably look at you like you are definitely better than them. Like they just see you in this beautiful, beautiful energy, um... But because you are so charming and so charismatic and romantic and beautiful and gorgeous, um, for a lot of people, it's overwhelming and it's a little bit too much. So <laughs> you may be a little bit of a heartbreaker. And when I see the Three of Swords here, you know, the Three of Swords usually indicates heartache and heartbreak. I mean, look at the heart right there you know that doesn't look like a happy heart it may be rainbow colored but it's not a happy heart so I see you guys as like being a heartbreaker like maybe when you were in middle school or high school or whatever you know maybe you had like a lot of people who had crushes on you you might be the kind of person who gets like multiple suitors like tons of you know guys or tons of girls just kind of throwing themselves at you you know it's almost like you know it's it's funny because I know you guys can't see it because it's not in the picture here but there's like a a poster of 98 degrees up here it's like you guys are in a boy band or something or a girl group and people are just throwing themselves at you and you're a little bit of a heartbreaker because you obviously can't be with everybody um and you do have to turn people down and say no sometimes and I don't feel like the heartache here is representing your heartache, but it's representing their heartache. That, you know, some of these people you have to turn away and say no to, it's really crushing for them. It's really devastating. And it can be so devastating for some of them, it sends them into a tower moment, which is crazy. And that's why I'm saying you guys are like my movers and my shakers. You guys are the ones who are breaking hearts and I don't feel like you even realize that you're doing this you're probably like what me no way like no one's pursuing me at all no one's interested in me but I think there's a lot of stuff going on beneath the surface that you don't know that you don't realize and it's it's sending people into tower moments when you know you wind up breaking their heart even if it's not on purpose like I don't feel like you're trying to hurt people or anything but um, you know, it sends people into these crazy tower moments where they're so heartbroken, you know, they kind of have to, like, refigure out their lives because they may have, like, really had their heart set on having this amazing relationship with you, and that's not going to happen. And I don't feel like you do that to everybody, obviously, because, you know, there's probably someone in your life at some point in time where, you know, the attraction's been mutual and you're like, yes, you know, like, I want to be with you. And then you're not, like, breaking that person's heart or anything. Um, but this is probably an ongoing trend that has happened many times in your life. And, I mean, it could be going on right now. You could be single and it could be going on. You could be in a relationship. You could be in a committed relationship and still have people throwing themselves at you because they just see you in this beautiful star energy. So... You're probably someone who is, you know, you just have this beautiful quality about you. I don't even know how to describe it. Um, but I, I do feel like 
when it comes to these situations where people may be heartbroken from not having that opportunity with you and sends them into tower moments, like, there may be a part of you that is aware of that, and because of that, you wind up protecting yourself, um, because, you know, you gotta have good boundaries established with that kind of stuff, and you can't give your heart away to everybody, and I do think that you know that. So you do put up boundaries where necessary, you know, like if there's somebody who approaches you and, you know, they ask you out and you have zero interest in them and there's no attraction whatsoever, you're not the kind of person who's going to lead them on. So you do establish boundaries with them. I mean, you may be the kind of person where maybe guys literally approach you and they tell you crazy things like, God told me that you're supposed to be my wife. Like, I mean, you may even have like those kind of crazy guys that may pop up into your life and you really have to protect yourself and put up your boundaries in those kinds of situations because, um, yeah, that's, that's a little scary and not healthy, obviously, especially if you really don't know somebody and they're not even like attracted to you. Um, Neapolitan, Collaboration, teamwork, and resourcefulness. So, you know, aside from all this craziness going on up here with you basically being this superstar, this celebrity in everybody's eyes that is almost inaccessible in some ways, um, who knows, maybe your boundaries are a little bit too tight sometimes because maybe you do come off a little bit um, too guarded for people to access. But I do feel like you do allow people to come close to you, you know, who you do feel comfortable with. You know, you do let that guard down. You know, it's it's like it's like getting into the club, you know. Um, you don't just let everyone behind the velvet rope and into the club. You know, it's, you're very VIP. You know, you only let certain people through that velvet rope and into the club. Um, anyway, with Neapolitan collaboration, teamwork, resourcefulness. Um, I do feel just in general with how you approach things in life, you know, you are someone who um, you do collaborate well and you do work well with others, especially those that you do let in beyond that velvet rope, you know, who you do let your walls down for and, you know, don't have crazy huge boundaries with. Um, so that's definitely a good thing. I think that you're someone who's very humble um, you know, even though you have this star quality and you seem to attract like tons of people your way, even though you're very charming and, you know, bring all this love to the table and stuff, um, you're not conceited about it though. You're not full of yourself. You're not full of your head in your head about it. Um, you may be like, even like very physically attractive, but um, once again, you're humble about it. This is not something that defines you. You're not conceited about it. You probably don't even see yourself that way. So you're a very humble person, which in turn makes you even more attractive <laughs> to those people who want to be with you because not only are you this beautiful star, but you're like real and you're humble and you're down to earth and you know, you really come across as like that full package. Um, and a part of being humble is, you know, having acceptance. So I don't feel like you're someone who um, who tries to control things too much. Um, you know, when people try to control their outcomes, um, you know, they're not accepting. They're not just kind of going with the flow. But I feel like you are someone who goes with the flow and you're receptive and you're feminine and you just kind of like accept things and... Um, you know, sometimes when you have to accept things, it's not always the easiest. It can be really hard, but you know, you don't try to like over push things and you don't try to control things and you just go with the flow. And even when it's hard, it still winds up turning out right at some point, even if it doesn't seem that way at first, because you're not trying to control it in the first place and you're kind of just leaving it in God's hands. And you know, we do have You Are the Light of the World, which, once again, really reflects back onto the star card here. You know, being a light, you're like a light in the dark place, and I feel like people are very drawn to that. Um, you know, you just 
or like a magnet drawing that in. And there's a chance that you could actually wind up pulling in people who internally are actually very dark because that's kind of what happens when you're carrying a lot of like light and goodness inside of you. Unfortunately, you kind of pull in and attract some very dark and nasty type of things. Um, not because you deserve that or you're wanting that or anything like that, but that's kind of just like, you know, those polar opposites. Um, so I do think it's, it's possible that you do pull that in. Like you could be a very empathetic, compassionate, understanding person, and you could be drawing in narcissistic people who want to take advantage of you, that kind of thing. And that, that could be a very big, big reason why you put up these boundaries and it could be a lot of reasons why these people wind up heartbroken and they wind up having these tower moments because, um, you know, they're the ones with the dark energy going on. They're the ones who have a lot of stuff that they got to work out and figure out in their life. But, you know, you are the light. You are the light in the darkness. You are the star. You're just like this beautiful, shiny, sparkly thing out there that you just draw people in and chances are you're not doing it on purpose because you are humble you're not going out there seeking attention or anything but it just kind of flows and comes to you naturally so um yeah that i mean that's a very very interesting energy to have and like i said you guys are kind of like the movers and shakers and you guys kind of change other people's lives even if you don't mean to even if it's not on purpose but it's just something about you that you wind up doing. Um, so yeah, that's that's what people find attractive about you. You're like this unattainable, sparkly star in the sky, just shining your light for all to see. But that's not a bad thing, you know. Keep doing you, keep doing that, you know. I would be more worried if you guys were conceited or something like that and full of yourself, but you're clearly not. You're, you're humble about it, so it's okay. You can keep shining, that's not a problem. Um, Anyway, I hope that this message made sense and it resonated for you. If the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did, please let me know and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot. Feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I'm sending you lots of hugs and much love.